Okay, I thought it would be fun to do a dye experiment. I have this awesome collection of eucalyptus seed pods that my husband brought home a branch's worth for me. Uh, I know that eucalyptus will die. I know that it will, its seed pods have concentrated colors. So I have a bunch. We're going to boil it for, you know, an age and a day, and we'll see what comes out and dye some stuff with it. Okay, so that will be our eucalyptus pod experiment. I will try to figure out the species, but there's like 121, so I'll do my best. Okay, here's our pot of eucalyptus. Everything's looking very, very exhausted and very colorless. I'm going to let it rest overnight. It's giving me kind of a reddish-brown vibe at the moment. We shall see you in the morning. Goodbye! Okay, good morning, everyone. Here is our overnight abandoned uh, eucalyptus seed pods. It looks sufficiently red and orangey, which was kind of what we were hoping for. So I will grab some mordanted fabric. We don't have a ton of this, so I might not transfer this to the big pot. Also, these are all sterilized now from being boiled for like four and a half hours. So you can also, if you have pet spiders, <laughs> which I'm sure some of you do, because it's a weird thing I would encourage anyway you can save these and let them dry out and then use them as little like spider enrichment items for them to play in so i'm going to drain this and probably add some fresh water meaning spring water that's filtered to just bring up the water level a little bit and we'll see what we can get out of this uh homemade eucalyptus dye Alrighty, let me get this strained and i will probably let these dry out um to put in a spider enrichment kit it's a very normal thing to be making. Right, there's our eucalyptus dye. I can't hold it up any higher to get you a view of it, but it is very red. Reddish orange. Fascinating. Okay, I'm going to grab some fabrics to throw in here, and we'll see what it does. It should be very tan and rich, so it should, theoretically, take up onto the cotton, if we're lucky. But again, I'm down to only oak gall mordanted cottons. I have nothing left that is cotton and mordanted, as I've been doing these experiments for roughly four weeks now. So anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, here we go, giving our eucalyptus homemade dye a try. I have oak gall mordanted stuff. I have the uh, weird supposed cotton magic mordant. Uh, we'll see how these come out. I'm going to give them about an hour at a just below a simmer and see how they do. Okay, it has been about an hour and our eucalyptus turned a very beautiful deep rich brown. It actually smells totally different now that it, oh sorry, now that it has had the uh, fiber boiling in it. It's got kind of like a really nice nutty smell to it. But obviously the silks took it best because uh, natural dye likes protein fiber. But the 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 oak gall tannin cottons actually did just fine. So uh, get these all laundered and we'll take a look at them when they're all finished later this evening uh, and dry. Alrighty, here is our review of the beautiful eucalyptus dye. And I believe I figured out which eucalyptus species it is. It is Eucalyptus cladocalyx, or the sugar gum. And I could tell that by the fruit pod size. Thank God I had fruit pods. Uh, but apparently it was very common in California. It was the fourth most popular <clears throat> uh, gum tree, or eucalyptus species, that they imported as windbreaks for all of our farms out here. And where I live, it's very hilly, and it is very heavily avocado farmed. And so it makes sense to have lots of windbreaks because we get extremely high winds in the canyons near me. So this is no uh, mordant at all onto cotton. So it did give it a beautiful, soft kind of buckskin tan. This is alum on the silk noir, which is another very beautiful, like, leather color. This is silk noir, and this is cotton, but oak gall tannined. So it kind of saddened it and just kind of increased the brownness of the general oak gall. And then it kind of helped it take up a little more color, but because it itself is obviously very tannin rich, it doesn't uptake on the tannin. 
This is the aluminum acetate that I've been repeatedly disappointed by. <laughs> been disappointed by it on the Loquat. I've been disappointed by it on the Cochineal because it leaves these weird freckles. And I did all of the instructions as they were described, but you can see where there are like freckles of the aluminum acetate where it did not uptake it or it took up more. I'd love it if the whole thing took it up that deep, but I, I followed all the instructions. We'll have to try again sometime. And then this is the alum triformate, which all of our rolls loved. And it's evident that the silk loves it as well. It gives you a brighter version of anything you do in alum. It's like impressively one shade brighter in richness. I'm trying to pull the camera back so it'll show you the slight difference, but this one is just one shade more intense is the only way I can describe it. But the alum triformate has been really good on this silk and that's an easy coal to dye process. So very happy with that triformate, not happy with aluminum acetate. But I thank you for coming on yet another color adventure with me. This one with a species of eucalyptus called sugar gum or eucalyptus cladocalyx, which is now native to our area since we imported it. Anyway, I will see you in the next experiment. I would like to thank all of my patrons and encourage you to check out my Patreon where I have three years of embroidery patterns instantly available to you, as well as all of my other nonsense and experiments. Thank you so much for coming. I hope to see you in the next experiment. Bye!